The views on this page do not necessarily represent the views of Mac News 144. Mac News 144 is committed to keeping this page an open platform for all Israel. Thank you all for subscribing and submitting your videos to Mac News 144 of gmail.com. We have grown to over 100 subscribers so we can begin to stream live. Praises to the Most High Yah. Shalom. This video is for you to be able to identify if you've had witchcraft used on you. Now, before you shut off the video, I warn you that you might want to hear what I have to say. And it's because so many people have misunderstood the word witchcraft in its English context that when a person has used it on you, you wouldn't even know. So I'm here and I'm going to show you and give you some examples of how to know if you've had witchcraft used on you. One of the first ways to know, and I'll, use, I'll preface with this before I get started, is that if you shut this video off, as I begin to list some of these things, it's a very high chance that you've had some of this witchcraft used against you. All right, let's get started. So there's a couple Hebrew words we'll deal with, and then I'll just give you a general definition of what witchcraft is. So most of the time in your mind, when you hear about witchcraft, you think of, ooh, scary monsters, or, or witches, or you know people who worship Satan. But nine times out of 10, it's not those people who are using witchcraft against you. It's actually people who come off really, really nice. People who come off as an authority in a particular subject, you know, kind of like teachers, preachers, pastors, spiritual leaders, you know, Jim Jones type stuff sometimes. Well, in this context today, we're gonna deal with kind of covering all of them. We're gonna deal with the witchcraft in the Hebrew Israelite religious movement. All right, so there's two words. Is the word haber or habar? In Hebrew, and it has to do with um, embracing, right? So at first it sounds so sweet. And then it deals with to be bound by a spell, okay? And it literally means to be bound together by enchantment. Now, when you think of enchantment, you think in a voodoo, or you're thinking of something dark and mysterious and ugly. But no, enchantment is something kind of like a Disney movie. You know, when Prince Charming comes riding in and he's on his horse and his hair is flowing in the wind, right? Right, okay, that picture. So enchanted is like the enchanted forest where there's nice creatures and there's Shrek and there's all these things. It doesn't come off as negative, right? It comes off as positive. Enchantment makes you feel good, it's euphoric. Can I get where I'm going with this? The next word is, and it literally deals with the idea of to cover or to veil or to keep something or some portion secret or to themselves. And the person keeps this portion secret in order to be able to whisper and give you information that you probably were not privy to before, but it's something that only they seem to have. Okay? You're kind of getting where I'm going with this. All right, for all you Hebrew Israelites out there, let's go. If someone tells you not to learn Hebrew because it's not that important, nine times out of ten that person is telling you that because they don't want you to look at the scriptures and then stop following them because they don't know it. Anytime somebody tells you not to go toward a particular type of knowledge, it's because that's their weak area. Instead of being like a normal person, you know, and saying, hey, I'm not really strong in this area, but there's this, 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 and all these sources can help you. That person wants you to themselves so they can whisper and enchant and group you together with other enchanted individuals in order to fool you. It's sorcery and it's witchcraft. If a person or group micromanages your friends, your groups, People outside of your group tells you not to talk to somebody, tells you not to check out their information because they're off. They're kind of calling you stupid because if you are doing your due diligence, which I hope you are before you get into any type of movement, then you should be able to discern between the truth and a lie using scripture. So the person's pretty much saying, I'm smart, you're stupid, let me figure it out for you. If you're divided from your brethren and the truth, because your teacher, bishop, leader, whomever, doesn't know the difference between first person and third person, nine times out of 10, you've been enchanted, and you're probably in a cult. 
If you don't know the difference between Ahaya and Yahuwah, and a person tells you that one is the devil, it's because they don't know Hebrew and they fooled you. No. If you cannot see the power of Messiah in observable evidence and can apply those principles, nine times out of 10, you've been enchanted because there is a messianic principle. And look up the word. There's a messianic principle in creation, okay? Somebody's telling you there is no Messiah, yet they're telling you you're a Hebrew. By the very nature of being a Hebrew and an Israelite, you believe in a Messiah. Look up the word. If a person is arguing with you on whether or not a per yeah can make a human out of nothing, Old or New Testament, nine times out of ten, that person's enchanted, and if you believe them, you're enchanted. Do you mean to tell me that we're going to argue about whether or not Yah can speak word and create a human in the New Testament, yet he pulled a man out of dirt, formed him, breathed with his spirit, because Yah is spirit, into this man, he became a living, moving soul. So he breathed into a lump of clay, started moving. Then he took from this clay in one of probably the greatest feats of surgery in human history and created a woman and then presented this woman to this man. And then they began to procreate. Yet this man has no mother outside of obviously Adama, the ground, and no physical father. But that's where we all come from. If you believe that, Yet you can't seem to wrap your mind around how y'all can speak life into existence. Nine times out of ten, you've been enchanted. If you still are being taught that Jesus was born on Passover, you're enchanted. Let me explain to you why. Jesus, first of all, was never born. Cool, right? Just kidding. Jesus... And many, have called, and many of you call him Yahushua, right? Or Yahusha. Was six months younger than John the Baptist, who was born on Passover. Now, you can't be six months younger than somebody and be born at the same time. But if you count back six months from Passover, guess where you'll end up? At the Feast of Tabernacles. And it was at the Feast of Tabernacles that the Word became flesh and tabernacled among us. Did anybody ever think to wonder why this baby was outside in a manger? Like, seriously? God was like, I can't find a place for my only begotten son, so I'm going to stick him with a bunch of animals who would then defile everything and make him... Doesn't make any sense. He was born in a sukkah because it was Sukkot. Wow, right? If you're feeling confused about when to take off your head covering... Because, you know, Paul says to pray without ceasing, nine times out of ten, you've been enchanted. If you keep a calendar that rejects any part of the natural order of things, because the Jews also might have something similar, nine times out of ten, you've been enchanted. If your camp teaches that you need to hate and reject your family for not being in the truth in order to separate yourself, right? Yet they go out every day and yell to strangers on the street. Eh, nine times out of ten, you've been enchanted. How am I going to care about a stranger more than my own family? Charity starts at home. If anyone tells you anything in scripture and hasn't read the whole Bible, don't listen to them. Because if you do, you're in a very good place to be enchanted. If your camp teaches that rape or sex is marriage and you believe it, you've been enchanted. If your camp has more warehouses and storefronts than storehouses and land, nine times out of ten, you've been enchanted. If your camp teaches the hate, abuse, misuse of women, nah, they haven't been enchanted. They're probably gay. If a man has convinced you that he should have multiple wives, yet he cannot provide for these multiple wives, nine times out of ten, you might be married to the other wives and he might be a pimp. If you're not allowed to look at, understand, and embrace the observable things that Yah has put here, 
Mm, I'm going to go on the side of you might be enchanted. When a person calls that which is good evil and that which is evil good because they don't understand it, it's because they're a sorcerer. If you're in the truth and you believe that names don't matter, I'm just going to go ahead and say you've been enchanted. If you are wearing the star of anyone and not actually embracing the actual symbols that Yah gave us as a nation, yeah, that one too. If you're being convinced that because of your sex, I mean literally male, female, specifically female, that you are somehow Satan and wicked and you deserve to be killed and you should just shut up and sit down and you believe that, you have been enchanted. If you spell Israel 37 different ways to somehow try to separate yourself from all these other groups, come on. If you believe David is the Messiah, If you believe there are no vowels in the Hebrew language and that somehow our ancestors spoke like, hmm, Neanderthals, then you've been enchanted. The Hebrew Israelite people, not the religion, but the people, are some of the smartest, most intelligent, most benevolent, most balanced people on the planet. If somebody's convincing you that by following the Hebrew Israelite way, that somehow you have to accept a bunch of crap, Get away. They're sorcerers. They're embracing you, binding you into a group, and those who are bound are cast into fire. It's that easy. Don't get bound to traditions of men and reject the truth of Scripture. Shalom, shalom. It's the Mac, it's the Mac, it's the Mac, it's the Mac, it's the Mac.